Hey guys, I got a video for you on stoichiometry, our new unit. It's called stoichiometry, or I call it stoich. So here's a, just a definition for you of what stoichiometry is. It's the relationship between quantities of reactants and products in a chemical reaction. So when we balance an equation, we often t call those coefficients the stoichiometry of the reaction because it's the relationship between reactants and products. Um, and then we're also going to use stoichiometry as like a process. We're going to do stoichiometry to figure out how many reactants we need or how much product we are going to produce in a reaction. All right, here are the steps for doing the superstar stoichiometry method. First step, always make sure your equations balance. If it's not, you need to balance it. Um, the next thing is they're going to give you some numbers for the reactants, for the products, whatever they give you, make sure it's in moles. Okay, we're going to use the BCA table before, change, and after is what BCA stands for, but you're only allowed to plug moles into your BCA table. So you need to use some mole island to go from grams to moles or liters to moles or whatever they give you. Um, once you're in moles, we're going to plug in the before boxes. Then we can fill in the change boxes. So remember, reactants are getting used up. So we do like minus 1x, minus 2x, minus 3x, depending on the stoichiometry, the balanced equation. And then products are made or produced. So we do plus 1x, plus 2x, plus 3x, or whatever the stoichiometry is. Um, next, we need to find the superstar, and we do that by figuring out x. So we take the moles in our before and divide it by the coefficient for each reactant. And whatever value is smallest, that is our x, that's our superstar, um, our limiting reactant. Okay, then we plug in that superstar's value for x, um, and it's all about the superstar. And we're going to solve for our after, and remember... The B box, the before, plus the change equals the after. Sometimes it's minus C, right, because sometimes we have the negatives. But I, plus a negative, you're going to get the same thing. Okay, and then um, if they want the answer in moles, you're good right there. But if they want something different, then you're going to have to convert from moles to grams or whatever they're asking for. All right, here's our first problem. If you start with two moles of SiO2, how many moles of SiF4 would you produce? So step one, we got to balance this equation. Don't worry, guys, I got this one. One, four, one, two. Okay, step two is we have to look at what's given. And in this case, two moles of SiO2 is what's given. And we need to convert it to moles. Well, that's so nice, Ms. Buller. This one already is in moles. So I'm going to say before we have two moles. Okay, um, and then how many moles of SiF4? So we are looking for how much is produced of this product. When they don't tell you one of the reactants, we are assuming it's in excess. A lot of times they'll say with excess HF, um, but if they don't mention it, assume it, we have excess, it's not running out, we're not worried about it. And then our products are going to always start with zero. We don't have any of these guys before we actually mix the chemicals. Okay, now we're going to do our change. So this guy gets minus 1x because of the 1, minus 4x because of the 4. And then remember our products we're making plus 1x because of the 1, plus 2x because of the 2. So now we need to find our x. And the way we do this is we're going to take our before divided by the coefficient. So for SiO2, we're going to get 2 moles divided by 1, which is just 2. And for HF, we're going to get excess moles divided by 4. Well, a lot divided by 4 is still a lot, so we still have excess. But we're going to end up doing to find our superstar is we're going to compare those two answers. And the smaller one, oops, that's not what I want. The smaller is going to be our X, which means this chemical is our limiting or our superstar. So in this case, 2 is our x. So we're going to plug in 1 minus, or 1, negative 1 times 2, negative 4 times 2, 1 times 2, plus 2 times 2. Okay, so that's minus 2, minus 8 when you multiply, plus 2, plus 4 when you multiply. So now the last step is we're going to take our before, and we're going to subtract from it the change. 2 minus 2 is 0 moles of SiO2 remaining. Excess minus 8 is going to give us excess moles of HF remaining. And then 0 plus 2 gives us 2 moles of SiF4 produced. 
and zero plus four gives us four moles of H2O produced. This question asks for how many moles of SIF4 would you produce? So there's my answer right there. Two moles of SIF4 will be produced. All right, team, let's try another one. Um, if you start with one mole of Fe2O3, how many moles of Fe would you produce? Um, before I worry about any of those given values, I need to balance this equation. So I notice that I have two aluminums on the product side and only one on my reactant side. So I'm going to put a two. Oops, sorry about that. Put a two. Um, two Fe's on the left. I need two on the right. And then everything else should be one. So we're good there. So now let's look at what's given. If I start with one mole of Fe2O3, so that goes in my before box, I have one mole of Fe2O3. How many moles of Fe would I produce? So produce is my after box, so this is what we are ultimately looking for. Notice they did not mention how much aluminum I have, so I'm going to assume that they want me to say it's excess meaning I have more than I need. I'm not going to run out. I'm not worried about it. Um, and then AL2O3 is on the right side of the arrow. That's a product, which means I'm starting with nothing. Obviously, if I look in my pantry um, and I see spaghetti and I see or some pasta and I see some sauce, um, that's great. Those are my ingredients, but I don't have any pasta yet or any spaghetti with meatballs yet until I actually do the cooking. So I also start with no um, of the no FE to begin. No, none of my products should have a starting amount. Now we're going to figure out the change. Well, I am going to use up some of my aluminum. How much? I'm going to use up two times this, this value X. Where's the two from? From that balanced equation. I'm going to use up one times X of the FE203. And now my product side I'm going to make, so plus 1 times x because of the 1, and plus 2 times x. Well, now I want to actually plug in x, so we need to find what that is. So down here off to the side, I'm just going to find x. So for aluminum, I'm going to take the excess divided by the coefficient. So I have, oops, excuse me, I have excess mole divided by 2. Well, excess just means I have a lot, so a lot divided by 2 is still a lot. And for my Fe2O3, I'm going to take my moles, 1 mole, and divide it by the coefficient 1. Well, 1 divided by 1 is 1. That is clearly, out of comparing these two, that is clearly smaller. So that is going to be my x, which means if x is 1, this Fe2O3 is my superstar. He is my limiting reactant. It means he is going to run out. So now let's plug that guy in. 1 times that 2, 1 times 1, plus 1 times 1, plus 2 times 1. That will be a minus 2, a minus 1, plus 1, plus 2. Now I'm going to find my after box. And to do that, I'm taking my before plus my change. So I'm taking... My excess minus 2, my 1 minus 1, 0 plus 1, and 0 plus 2. So excess minus 2 will still give me excess moles of Al remaining. 1 minus 1 gives me 0 moles Fe. 203 remaining, which is a sign of my superstar, right? It's all about the superstar. It should be running out. I should have zero left over. Now my product zero plus one gives me one mole of Al203, and I'm going to use the word produced because we're making that, and zero plus two gives me two mole of Fe produced. The question is ultimately asking for Fe, so I'm going to circle that guy as my answer. Two moles of Fe are produced. All right, do me a favor. In your packet, let's skip to number four. I'm going to show you one where you have to kind of think backwards. Um, still, first step, I'm going to balance this equation. So in this case, it's actually really easy. You can pause the video and double check for me, but um, I got all ones across. Um, but here, here's where we're a little backwards. If you manage to produce, so I am making three moles of CaCO3. Well, if we look, CaCO3 is a product. So what they're saying is I am making three moles of CaCO3. 
how many moles of CO2 did I start with? So now I want to know how much of this did I start with, okay? So let's fill in what we know. If we're looking for some number in this box and they don't mention CaOH2, that means he is my excess. So I have excess of this guy. Um, CaO3 was produced and H2O was produced, but they are products, so we must be starting with zero moles as our beginning amount. Okay, we can still go through the same way. I'm going to use up minus 1 times x. I'm going to use up minus 1 times x. Again, I have a certain amount here. I just don't know how much right now. Okay, we had to make 1 times x, and we had to make 1 times x. Excuse me. Plus 1x. Okay, um, I don't really need to know much about the H2O, so I'm just going to put an X through that. Um, but now we need to find X, and typically, remember, we would take excess divided by 1 and compare it to this number divided by 1 to figure out which one is smaller. In this case, we have to do something different to find X because I don't know what this number is right here. So here's what we're actually going to do. We are going to use this column to help us find our X because remember, oops, B plus C equals A. So for CaCO3, that column, 0 plus 1x equals 3, right? 0 plus 1x equals my A. So if I, I know this 0 doesn't mean anything. So if I have 1x equal to 3, divide both sides by 1, that means x is going to be equal to 3. That's the only way we could have gotten 3 moles here. So if my x is equal to 3, this guy's kind of my, my one we're focusing on because they gave us information. And we use that to find our x. So now let's actually plug in. We have minus 1 times 3, minus 1 times 3, plus 1 times 3, plus 1 times 3. Um, excess minus 3 is going to be excess. Question mark minus 3 has to equal something. Well, what do we know if this one's my... If this one's excess, that means this one must have been my superstar, right? This one must have been the one that ran out. And what do we know about the superstar? It always ends at zero, right? The superstar always runs out. So now if I say my question mark minus 1x equals zero, and we know question mark minus... 1 times x is 3 equals 0. What does question mark have to be? Question mark has to be 3. What that means is this must have been 3 moles to begin, right? 3 minus 3 would give us 0 for our superstar. So I can answer this question backwards um, by using the given information of what was produced. I know that if I made 3 moles of CaCO3, I must have started with 3 moles of CO2. Why? Well, when I worked backwards through the stoichiometry, that's what it told me for this box right here. There's my final answer. Hopefully this video is helpful. I would like you to go back and try number three, try number um, five, and then see if you can do number six. Don't forget, for your first step, we have to go from grams to moles. All of these started in moles, but for number six, use your mole island to help you. So I want you to go back and do questions all the way through number six.